This is Dr. Sargisian and today we'll talk about alteration of renal and urinary tract function. One of the common disorders of urinary tract is uh, obstruction of it and what happens blockage of urine flow occurs within the tract and blockage can occur any place in the urinary tract. So there are two main sources of this either anatomic or functional defect and uh, it also can be discussed as obstructive uropathy and uh, regardless of the cause is it anatomic narrowing of the, the uh, ureter or or both ureters or uh, it's uh, obstruction with tumor or um, a uh, stone uh, we still need to deal with consequences so it's nice to know what's the actual source of it but my, our main concern is obstruction itself so we need to deal with the severity of the obstruction and the uh, severity is depending on where it's located where the obstruction located complete or incomplete is there a urine seeping through or it's completely obstructed does it involve both upper urinary tracts both ureters or uh, just one uh, how long has been going on and what's the cause and by knowing the cause we need to understand is it preventable is it some type of kidney stone which we'll talk in a little bit or we can prevent or it's a tumor or um, something else or prostate uh, enlargement so all of these have to drive us to our understanding of urinary tract obstruction basically you need to find out uh, what's the source and you need to find out uh, what's happening how severe it is is it uh, easily reversible or you need to introduce s something more drastic to reverse it kidney stones are uh, one of the factors that can cause urinary tract obstructions and especially when stone is dislodged and traveling down the urinary tract it may tend to obstruct the flow and uh, to understand kidney stone we need to uh, understand that there are substances that may inhibit growth of the crystals or stones or uh, and substances that will enforce the growth of the stones and there are also issues of particle retention to understand the stones we need to realize that stones are just crystals of uh, substances that usually are passing through the uh, renal urinary system and excreted but for one or the other reason the stones are staying in the kidney or urinary tract and uh, growing they can be very tiny like a grain of sand or smaller or uh, get to the size of the golf ball or even bigger again stones are the most common cause of urinary obstruction the demographics of stones um, development uh, vary but urolithiasis is more common in male patients and also white patients but again you, at this point you know that I won't be testing you on epidemiology uh, in this class unless I specifically tell you to know this information this is basically nice to know information so where the calculi form they would form location wise in uh, in the um, let's say renal pelvis ureters and bladder when we're thinking about uh, renal stone it's not just uniform crystal 
structure. It doesn't have anything in common, really, with the crystals uh, you buy as jewelry, such as diamonds, whatever, sapphires, or the, these stones are very compound. It can be different types of fracture um, mixed together, and uh, they are not very uniform. Um, there are different types of stone, but it's not when we're talking about crystal in colloquial, it's very uniform symmetric system. Here it's just a stone, like a ball, and or it may remind you just something um, like you can find on the beach or you, you can find uh, digging in the garden. So there is no uniformity. What types of stones we have? Calcium stones are <coughs> forming secondary to many different uh, factors. This, uh, these are one of the most common stones and uh, one of the one of the reasons this may form it's out um, I would say it's uh, excess of calcium maybe in dietary in intake versus increased absorption in the calcium in the small bone, hyperparathyroidism and other source, and inability of renal tubules to reabsorb calcium. Chronic bowel disease uh, may result in uh, losing fats or steatorrhea. And uh, uh, if we are losing uh, fat, you know, uh, if we are losing fat, fat may uh, combine with uh, calcium and uh, at this point uh, when fat absorbed and uh, calcium is not able to bind to oxalate which will cause stone formation. So basically, steatorrhea can be a precursor of stone formation because of the calcium's inability to bind to oxalate. This is, uh, for take home message from this long sentence is that chronic bowel disease can result in stone formation and calcium stone formation. You need to know that. Treatments, um, very different for these uh, ones and uh, it's usually uh, depending on the cause and uh, you may start administering cellulose phosphates or thiazide diuretics to basically decrease dietary absorption of calcium uh, certainly if the stone gets so big that it's not uh, possible to uh, move it by, non -trad uh, by traditional methods, by basically uh, increasing fluid intake, uh, surgical intervention may be necessary. But if it's parathyroid dysfunction, uh, maybe a resection surgically if parathyroid will be uh, necessary to uh, treat the hyperparathyroidism and then secondary to that we will have um, the, we will decrease the calcium stone formation. So struvite uh, stones which is really a fancy name for magnesium ammonium phosphate stones it, they are caused actually by bacteria and uh, urinary pH should stay at certain level to grow them at 7.2 approximately roughly and um, again you know that 7.2 is fairly acidic but if we go lower than that acidity wise uh, we certainly will have create the environment that won't be any benefit for the bacteria. So we have to have this fairly narrow window of pH to grow this. And unlike calcium stones, these are fairly large stones. 
but they may have fairly soft texture and uh, you can deduct have some uh, deductive thinking out of this okay if this is related to bacteria will the patient be more susceptible to UTI you cannot say that however maybe the opposite and to make the statement clear yes the this type of stones uh, Strew white stones are related or associated to fre frequent UTIs. And another uh, observation here you can make that this is more common in women than in men. Treatment of UTI can be preventing, um, you know, or prevention of UTI can be preventing the formation of this type of stones. How to treat the stones, not only this type, but even calcium stones, you certainly can opt for percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Cystintric stones are related to abnormal exertion of amino acids or cysteine and one of uh, not only cysteine but uh, uh, lysine or lysine and arginine so but uh, these are uh, abnormal um, stones or abnormal condition related related to amino acid uh, excess and uh, prevention will be the increase of fluid and increasing the pH of urine above 7.5 means you are creating a basic environment which will not be beneficial to the stones. Um, uric acid stones are large stones and uh, again pH plays a big role in here but your pH should go approximately um, around 5 or 5.5 the more acid you have the more acidic is the environment the more urate salt stones formation can be encouraged so common causes of this uh, can co can be related to I'll say this thing and you will think like he's uh, he lost his mind but uh, it can be related to rapid and dramatic weight loss and also malignancies which may cause the weight loss uh, weight loss can be related to this and again it should be dramatic so when I always you know try to find links with obesity and um, common disorders such as cardiac or even GI in this case weight loss can actually cause stones and again um, you have to watch that pH of urine and if pH drops basically very acidic urine in this situation will be encouraging the uric acid or urate salt formation these stones are fairly ra uh, large but the good news is so um, you may actually dissolve them by increasing the urine pH with potassium citrate so uh, at, if potassium citrate is uh, introduced then at this point will be uh, the pH will go above like 6.5 from 5.5 6.5 or more then you will get rid of the stones fairly easily so this is pretty much the stone overview you need to know and the main take-home message here you may consider that pH plays significant role in this so knowing the pH will help to understand stones Uh, what happens when patient has stones, the manifestations in general is renal colic, it's a uh, severe pain that's uh, really truly very difficult to treat, it's a colicky pain, pain colicky 
that's a paint that actually fluctuates in intensity and the colic may last um, up to one hour or more and it's severe and what happens um, the, one of the examples will be that the ca uh, calculi is scratching or scraping their ureter wall and uh, it's getting that colicky quality of I mean uh, and colicky again it's a period of pain severe pain because um, ureter is trying to push the stone along so it's a spasm that's pushing the stones down the road so uh, maybe the outcome will be uh, fairly nice uh, eventually when stone passes but because of scratching and uh, respond to that the contraction of ureter may lead to severe pain and pain of course radiated in uh, flank area again evaluation of stones uh, is important